Hello there and welcome to this video looking at hardware and communication in our A-level specification. In this video specifically we're going to look at assembly language programming and over the next couple of videos and that's because students seem to be struggling in this area. Now this question looks first at the fetch decode execute cycle before getting into assembly language so let's have a look at question 2a. Explain the sequence of operations which will occur during the fetch phase of the fetch execute cycle, making clear the role of the program counter, the memory address register, and the memory data register. So this is worth three marks, and we've been given three parts of the CPU there that we need to comment on, or three registers, should I say, and we need to comment on each one of them. Now, quick recap here. With the fetch decode execute cycle, memory addresses start in the program counter and the program counter passes the memory address over into the memory address register. Now the memory data register gets the memory address from the memory address register and goes and fetches the data. The data gets stored in the memory data register and normally what happens is as soon as the PC hands over the memory address the PC actually increments by one and the reason it does that is so that it can go and start fetching the next instruction. So the memory data, the memory data register has goes to the address given by the memory address register, and it goes and collects the data. Now this here, what you've seen is this is the fetch phase of the fetch execute cycle. What happens after this is then the data register takes the data and passes it to the current instruction register. Then it tries to figure out what on earth is going on in the decode phase. And once it's worked out exactly what's going on, the current instruction register hands over the instruction, once it's been decoded, to the control unit, which will then send signals around the computer. And this is our execute phase. So we've got fetch, decode, execute. Now all we're being asked to comment on is what's going on inside the fetch phase. So all I would really comment on is I would say the address the next instruction is copied from the program counter to the memory address register and that will give you one mark after the memory address register has the information from the program counter then the memory address register I won't say passes I'll say then and copies the instruction to the memory data register. And don't forget that the program counter is incremented. That means goes up by one or moves on to the next one. And we do that so that it can hold the next instruction and this will get you one mark here and this will get you one mark here so for a total of three marks the address of the next instruction is copied from the program counter to the memory address register the memory address register then copies the instruction to the memory data register and the program counter is incremented so that it can hold the next instruction and that's three marks in total nice and simple as long as you know what's going on in the fetch decode execute cycle. So now let's have a look at 2B. So a simple computer has a number of 16-bit registers. Its assembly language set includes the following. We've got a command called load r comma x and that loads the register r with the contents of the address x. Then we've got another command called store r comma x and that stores the contents of register r in address x. Then we've got a third command xor r and that executes a bitwise xor operation on the contents of register r1 and r2 storing the results back in register 1. 
So there are three commands that we're given, and in all these A-level questions, you always get the assembly language explained to you, which is a nice help indeed. Now, explain what the following fragment of code does by showing the content of registers and addresses at each step. Make clear the contents of register 1 when the fragment has finished execution. Assume that the address of D1 initially contains 1001, 0110, 1110, 1100, and assume that the address D2 initially contains 1110, 1011, 1010, 0011. Then we've got some commands down there, load 1D1, load 2D2, XOR1, 2, store 1D3, XOR12. Now the trickiest with these questions is to take your time and take them step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to write out the contents of register D1 and the contents of register D2. Now if you're going to do this, be really careful that you don't mess up any of the bits and keep them grouped as best as you can. It's easy to make mistakes, so take it nice and slowly. So all we've got to do is show what happens at each step as we go through this. So we've got a load command, 1, D1. So this says load Rx loads register R, so this will be load register 1, with the contents of address x, which is the contents of the address d1. So this means, because it's got a 1 here, this, according to what we've been given, is a register. So all I'll do is I'll put down register 1, like so. And this says load register r with the contents of address x. So address x in our case is D1, so it's going to load register 1 with D1. Nice and simple, I'll just copy register D1 into here. It's like making a copy. There we go, copied across. So I've done that line of assembly language code now, and I move down to the next one. Then it says load 2, so this is a new register called register 2, so I'll write down register 2 here, register 2, and that gets the contents of D2, so there's D2 up there, so I'll copy the contents across there, 1011, 1010, and 0011. So all I've really done is I've just basically made a copy of the two registers in two new registers. Simple as that. So far, so good. Now, doing this so far is going to get you two marks. So it's going to get one mark for that correct copying into that register and the correct copying into that register. Easy, right? Then what we do is we look at this one, XOR12. Now, what it wants you to do is it says take register 1, Take register 2 and execute a bitwise XOR operation. Now it sounds scary, a bitwise XOR operation, but if you remember back to our logic, an XOR can have a couple of different interpretations. And I'll put them down here. So if I had register A, register B, and then I had A, XOR B. And what we get is zero here, opposites, opposites, zero. And that's what a logical XOR does. We have the opposites always return ones. So what I have to do is I have to go through the register and I have to basically XOR these two registers together. And now it says here, the contents of register R1 and R2 XOR those together, storing the results in register 1. So the results of this go back into register 1. Register 1, there we go. And now I'll just XOR these together. So 1 and 1 
Looking down here, he's going to give me 0. 0 and 1 gives me 1. 0 and 1 gives me 1. 1 and 0 gives me 1. 0 and 1 gives me 1. 1 and 0 gives me 1. 1 and 1 gives me 0. 0 and 1 gives me 1. 1 and 1 again gives me 0. 1 and 0 is 1. 1 and 1 gives me 0. 0 and 0 gives me 0. 1 and 0 gives me 1. 1 and 0 gives me 1. 0 and 1 gives me 1. 0 and 1 gives me 1. And again. Nice and simple. Take it slowly. And we've completed this part of the assembly language now. This line of code. So store 1 D3. So what it says now in store RX here. So basically for us it's store 1 D3. So it says stores contents of register R. For us it's register 1 which is this one. In address X. So in D3. So what it wants me to do is create a new register called D3 and it wants me to copy the contents across into D3 now. I mean this couldn't be any more simple if it tried. This is fantastic number of marks for these kinds of questions and doing those together will again get you one mark. Okay done that tick it off and then the last line of code says x or 1 comma 2. So now what I've got to do is I've got to execute a bitwise XOR operation on the contents of register 1 and register 2 storing the results back in register 1. Okay, so I take the contents of register 1 now. Now be careful because the register, contents of register 1 have changed now. So what I'll do is I'll just draw a line under this and I'm looking let me just get my green pen out for this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I need the contents of register 1 and XOR it with the contents of register 2, storing it back in register 1. Register 1 again. Okay, so I'm looking at this one here and this, uh, this 0 here. That's going to give me 1, 1 and 1. 1 and 1 gives me 0. 1 and 1 gives me 0. 0 and 1 gives me 1. Badly drawn. 1 and 1 gives me 0. 0 and 1 gives me 1. 1 and 0 gives me 1. 1 and 1 gives me 0. 1 and 0 gives me 1, 0 and 1 gives me 1, 1 and 0 gives me 1, 0, 0 gives me 0, and 0, 1 gives me 1, 0, 1 gives me 1, 1 and 1 gives me 0, and 1 and 1 gives me 0. And what's interesting is for the key night amongst you, you'll see that it's reverted back into its original state. And that is something, what's actually going on here is encryption and decryption using a key. However, that's not pertinent to the question. So here's my final register here. And that will get you your final mark there. So take your time, follow the assembly lines of code and just follow the instructions carrying out the XOR operation on there. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult for you. And feel free to move on to the next question and we'll tackle that one.